Hello, I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to another thing. There are refugees who come to this country from around the globe, but one particular group of refugees find themselves in the middle of an ever-growing controversy. Over 30 governors, including New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, have said their states will not accept Syrian refugees until they get an assurance that terrorists can be vetted from their midst. And Congress has voted to pause the program despite the threat of a presidential veto. On other things, Ellen Kaloje begins our coverage with a check of the passions on both sides of the controversy. Ellen. Thank you, Larry. The Syrian refugee crisis has been happening since 2011, but ever since those Paris attacks where one of the leaders allegedly posed as a Syrian refugee, well, that certainly ramped up the controversy here at home and around the world. At congressional hearings debating whether to expand background checks on Syrian and Iraqi refugees, both sides had very strong opinions. Now, we cannot stick our heads in the sand and say that somehow that we're not bringing this upon ourselves. And we are watching this. We're, we're slow motion cultural suicide in America. Slow motion, a generation behind Europe. I urge my colleagues to keep a cool head and not to react exactly the way ISIS and other terrorists hope we do, with fear, with chaos, and with lashing out. The bill easily passed 289 to 137, with 47 Democrats voting yes. But Catherine Warwick, a political science professor at Villanova University, says this bill is overkill. I think that's really unfortunate because the people who are being targeted for, you know, a, a discussion of what a threat they are and, and how frightened we are of them are actually the victims of a conflict. They're not the people who are a threat. They're the people fleeing the threat. More than two dozen governors say they don't want Syrian refugees coming into their states. And Donald Trump says he'd keep all Muslims out of the country until we figure this out. But Professor Warwick says punishing the refugees isn't the answer. You go through vetting by the UN, and then you go through vetting by several American government agencies. It takes about two years. It is the hardest way to get to this country. So the threat posed by refugees is just non-existent compared to many other legitimate public safety threats. For now, the passing of the SAFE Act in the House means a stop to President Obama's plan to let 10,000 Syrian refugees into the U.S., but the next step will be getting through the Senate. Now, even if that bill passes the Senate, President Obama has vowed to veto it. Reporting for Another Thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. To talk more about Syrian refugees coming to the U.S., Pastor Seth Copperdale of the Reformed Church of Highland Park and Highland Park Mayor Gail brill Mittler. And the reason we are talking to the pastor and the mayor is because your church, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, is helping refugees uh, assimilate into our society. Yes, um, my congregation, together with about 30 other congregations, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, all together have, have formed an interfaith coalition for refugee resettlement in central New Jersey. And there's Syrian refugees as part of this resettlement. We have a deep desire to support Syrian refugees as that's one of the largest refugee crises unfolding in the world right now. And, you, and he's in your jurisdiction and you support these efforts. Yes, I do. Um, I, I have seen the efforts um, put forth by different clergy members and residents of our community and surrounding communities to who understand the importance of helping refugees escaping from persecution, whether it's religious or, or uh, political. Are, are you a Democrat or a Republican? I didn't ask. Um, does that matter? <laughs> yes, it does, only because I'm going to bring up the politics of it in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Democrat. And so it, it is not, is it, then would it not be surprising that you're running counter to our Republican governor? Uh, on this issue? No. I, you know, I'm sure there are other Republicans that might feel the same way I do. Um, I, I'm not running counter to Governor Christie because he's a Republican. I'm running counter what he, to what he's saying because it's un-American. It, do, does everybody, do all your constituents feel that way? Um, I can't speak for every single one of our residents, but I have had many discussions with different segments of our population. And all of us feel we need to find a way to help people who are being persecuted. Um, as um, you may or may not know, there's a large Jewish population in my community. And I've reached out to them. The, the OU, which is the Orthodox Union, has issued a statement right after the attacks in Paris happened saying that we need to find a way to come to yes, 
for settling the Syrian refugees. Uh, Pastor, just this week, there was an intelligence briefing in Congress, and Michael McCall, who runs the Homeland Security, came out and said, we were just briefed, and ISIS is trying to infiltrate this Syrian refugee program. Shouldn't we be concerned by that? We need to really get correct answers when we get that kind of a briefing. Um, the refugee resettlement program in America is a, a very long process. There's at least five different agencies that give um, careful security checks to individuals. So I don't know if that statement was saying that Syrians trying to get to Europe are trying to get no, into America. No, it specifically America. said the United States. I don't know the route, but it specifically said the United States. Well, that has to be some very uh, ludicrous people who are planning to come through the refugee resettlement program because it's extremely long, and the, the chances of somebody slipping through that are just, uh, it, that's an absurd approach for a terrorist to take. So you're saying uh, if ISIS wanted to get here, there are quicker and easier ways to get the United States than going through the Syrian refugee program. There sure are, and I wish our governors would be pushing for um, a yeah. careful look at student visas and at tourist visas instead of creating this anxiety about the very tiny trickle of refugees that we're actually receiving at this time. Uh, we just had a terrorist attack in San Bernardino, and we found out that one of the people that came over just lied about her address and was able to get over to this country. So it does seem like there are some holes in the system. Are you saying, and I'll ask both of you this, I'll start with the pastor, are you saying we shouldn't be concerned about that? There are serious holes in our security system. I have no problem stating that. I think the place where there are very, very few holes, I would even say almost no holes, are the program that we call Office of Refugee Resettlement and its program. When you speak of a Syrian refugee resettlement program, we don't have a Syrian refugee resettlement program. We have the same program that we've had and that's run beautifully for decades. Uh, Ronald Reagan had over 100,000 refugees a year coming through this program. President Obama has, has allowed up to 75,000 per year in his presidency, but we've never had more than 55,000 per year come through um, during the time he's, he's in place. This is not the program that's broken. Other programs are broken. Would you like to comment? I agree 100 percent with what the pastor said. But we didn't, have, uh, we didn't have ISIS. We had other threats. I'll, I'll, I'll say we had other threats, especially Libya at the time of Reagan. But we didn't have ISIS. This seems to be, like to be a, a new threat, someone that was able to get the resources. They, they're getting a billion dollars in, in oil money and, and to be able to have state-run terror because they were able to form this caliphate. Um, so they have resources that maybe some others didn't have. Is, is, and maybe it's a new threat. And, and I think people that are, are asking for a pause in the program are doing it with an abundance of caution. Is there, would you argue that they're misdirected in that, in their caution? No, I think we need to be cautious. I think we all need to be cautious. As the pastor said, there are areas, you mentioned what happened out in California last week. Um, the, the person that you were referring to who, who settled here came through Tashfin on a, Malik. Right. Yeah. She came through on a marriage visa mm -hmm. here in the United States. Right. She came through much faster and easier than any of these people who are trying to escape and save their lives and their families. And she came through Saudi Arabia, an ally of ours. Correct. Not, right. Yeah. Correct. And so you, you're making the exact same point, and I, I want to bring this up because we talked about this earlier. You talked about it's not just Syrian refugees. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of the refugees that you're seeing are not from Syria. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan, you said, in North Africa. And certainly in Afghanistan, there's still al-Qaeda and Taliban in Afghanistan, and nobody seems to be talking about that. And in North Africa, uh, that is where al-Qaeda has really been able to take a footing, and that we saw an attack in Mali just a short time ago. So it is interesting that we are laser focused on Syria right now, and that's why I said misguided a, a, right. a moment ago. I, I let, I'll let you both comment on that, and then we have to wrap up. There are 60 million refugees in the world right now. 30 million of them are children. We have the biggest refugee crisis in this world since World War II, and we are choosing here in the state of New Jersey to flip out over the fact that there's 20 Syrian families here since 2012. All right, that's really misdirected and misguided. We have 88 Syrians who've come in. That is as careful as careful can be. I find it an atrocious misuse of power that our governor has joined with these other 31 governors to mistakenly express concerns about where the security problems lie in this country. We are going to continue our conversation with a political reporter who covers the governor very closely when we come back in our next segment. But Pastor Seth Copperdale, the Reformed Church of Highland Park, and Highland Park Mayor Gail 
Brill Mittler. I wanted to make sure I got both names correctly. Thank you so Thank much, you. Mayor, for being in. Thank you, Thank Pastor. You. Our conversation continues right after this.